Welcome back to RBV Block Challenge. I'm Cindy Cloward, and today we are working on block number 12. It's called Flip Flopped, and it's designed by Sandy Gervais. This is what it looks like in our confetti cottons. This is what it looks like in our expressions batiks, both fun and bright. As always, the first thing you need to do is download the pattern on our RBD website, again called Flip Flopped. I'm gonna put the pattern over here. I've already cut out all my pieces, labeled them, and we're ready to get started. So let me put on my glasses. I need those first and foremost. And um, let me show you, I've already made two of these and this is what we're going to be making these two corners. So we're gonna make two of these units and two of these units, just like this. So um, we're gonna grab, you're gonna make them four at a time, but I'm just gonna make them two at a time since I've already got two made. So you pull those out and then you're gonna grab your two of your B squares for each of these, two and two. And then you'll just grab an A. So I'm just gonna grab two A and put it to the side. Now you, you're, it's the stitch and flip method. And if you don't have a seam sew easy guide, you're going to mark corner to corner. And that will be your stitch line. And I'm not gonna mark that because I do have a seam sew easy guide. And it's gonna be opposite corners. So you're gonna put one in here, one in here. We can take it to our machine. And you're just gonna chain piece them all together. And again, a reminder that you're gonna just be, this is your stitch line and you're gonna sew corner to corner. And sometimes I do just go, oh, just a thread. You're basically sewing on the line, but maybe just a tiny skosh to the outside. So it, when it folds over, it just makes that perfect square. Okay. You can clip your threads now or wait till later, but then I just turn it just like that. All right, use my B cutter, clip it there, and just bring it back to your cutting station and just make sure, remind yourself, orient yourself to the pattern, make sure it's opposite. And then I'm gonna get my quarter inch plus trim ruler and trim down to a quarter inch. And then next, once I get this trimmed down, we're gonna take it to the pressing station. And we're gonna flip that open. And just discard those pieces. So let's take it over here. like warm up my stitches, open it up. And that's what you wanna see, just a continuous square. Okay, let's bring it back here. And just one of the corners. I'm gonna put that on just like that. Again, you're gonna mark it. If you don't have a, a guide on your machine, corner to corner. Let's go stitch that on. Okay your threads and that's what you want to see 
you open it up and make sure you have a quarter inch from that point to the outside edge. That looks good. That looks good. And then you can trim it down. So let's just trim it down. That's good to go. And we're gonna take it to our pressing station and then just flip that open. You can save all your scraps for a project later if you'd like. Have a bin of scraps. And it's always fun to have a bin of scraps if you've got kids or grandkids that they can just, they can use them in craft projects or they can um, have a little sewing project with your scraps. That's a great thing to use with your scraps. Okay, so we've got all these pieces finished because I've already finished the other two. We're gonna put those to the side. And now we're gonna work on, um, it's kind of like a square pseudo <laughs> flying geese kind of look. It's the same way you assemble a flying geese, but you need to pay attention to placement because you'll notice these are opposites. So I've already made these two uh, units right here and just notice that they're opposite. So um, you can do them two at a time because you need two of each, or if you wanna try and do them all together and keep them straight, you can do that as well. So we're gonna grab some more of our A squares and then, some, and then we're gonna grab these are these E, got these little E orange squares. And then we're gonna grab a couple F squares. So let's bring them over here. And that's gonna go there. That's gonna go there. So we're gonna do opposites. I'm gonna put that there. And again, if you don't have a seam so easy, guide mark them corner to corner. All right, let's clip our threads. Take it back here. And again, you can flip them so they're the same. So make sure you don't flip them and you pay attention to the pattern and you keep them going the opposite direction. So I'm gonna trim that down now. And I'm gonna trim that down and we'll take it to our pressing station. Open that up. Take some of that heat out, just like that. Again, that's gonna be opposite, opposite. Now we're gonna add our orange to both sides. Okay, let's take it to the machine and sew. Again, mark it corner to corner. If you don't have a guide on your machine, it's so handy to have a guide so you don't have to spend time marking. Take it to our machine, our pressing station. Open that up. It's looking so good. And a reminder, what we want to see is from that point to the top, a quarter inch. Okay, we've finished these two units. So we'll pair them with the, the ones that they match. So you've got two and two. 
Okay, let's put these to the side. And now we're gonna work on our flying geese units. You need four of them, but two of them are gonna be opposite of the other. So you've got it like this. So look at this. Again, just be mindful of placement of, of your, your squares. It's easy to get mixed up. So follow your pattern, lay them out. Let's grab our C rectangles. Since I've already made two, I only need to make two more. You're gonna lay them out and remember these are opposite. So you can grab your squares. It might be helpful to mark them so your brain remembers which way you need to sew. Um, you can always finger press them too. So I want this to flip this direction. Since I have a seam so easy guide, I'm just gonna do a finger press so I'll remember to sew along that. And and I'm gonna get sew along that way. So it's gonna be opposite. So let's take it to our machine and sew. All right, let's cut our threads in between. We'll bring them back here. And that's exactly what we want to see. So let's trim down to our quarter inch. Take it to our pressing station. Again, you can do all four at once, make it easy on you, but sometimes it's just easier to do things two at a time. Okay, here and here. Now let's get our two orange squares. And you know which direction you need to go this time. I'm gonna sew right on your line, corner to corner, right on your line, corner to corner, or just use your seam so easy guide. Take it back. Just make sure they're still opposite. They should be, right? Flip it over. So let's press those open. Okay, very good. Looks like I've got an extra th thread there. Okay, we've made all of our units. It's time to assemble our block. So I'm gonna grab everything here, put this over there. And let's, let's see how this comes together. Now, it's important that these are accurate sizes, so Look at this continuous line. We have it on both sides. That's what we want to see, where those points come together. So if you've cut everything accurately, you've sewn your quarter inch seam accurately, that's what we want to see. But we let do a double check. Make sure all your units are the right size. And it tells you on the pattern. These should be three inch squared. So you can always take one of your rulers, make sure it's they're all three inches. I've looked at them and they are measuring three inches. These should be, oh, three inches by one and three quarters. So you can do a quick little check. Three inches by one and three quarters. You can measure all of those. And then just a quick reminder, this should measure four and a fourth, not four and a half, four and a fourth. So you can Lay it down and just make sure before you get sewing that it measures four and a fourth and it looks great. So uh, just a reminder to make sure you check all your units so when you come together, you're gonna have again that beautiful continuous straight line. Your points are 
all going to be perfect. So let's lay this out together, shall we? So the pattern tells you to do uh, this unit first. So you're gonna take these and you don't want them to be opposite. So take your long, your big squares and we're gonna line up these with all the, the other units. So you'll see that it's orange, 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 orange. They're going the right way, right? So uh, we're gonna lay those on top and we're gonna strip piece together. So when you sew this, it's gonna be like the arrows facing the same way. So you can pin those if you'd like. Or you can just line them up like this and take your design board over, which is what I'm choosing to do. Move those pins over. Everything's lined up and I am ready to sew. I am gonna flip it over because I actually want to see my point that I, the seam I'm sewing down on. So I don't cut off my point. So I, you can flip over your little units together, make sure they're lined up. And then I'm gonna sew down this side and make sure I don't cut off my tip right there. Grab your next one, just flip it over as well. in between and then I'm just going to take it directly to my pressing station and I would recommend if your pressing station is away from where you're sewing your pattern to print up another pattern because there's a lot of tips on which way to press your seams so that's going to be helpful to have one at your pressing station. Now this is what we want to see. We want to see that point right there on that seam, but not, we can still see the point. And it tells you in um, the directions of the pattern to press this direction with your seam. So sometimes I press on the back side and then I'll flip it over to the front side. And you can see how beautifully that's coming together. Let it cool off underneath your clapper just do one at a time that way. Let that cool off. And we're gonna take it back to our design board and lay everything out. I'm gonna grab the H square that goes in the middle. Flying geese are, throwing, are flying towards that H square and then you've got to line these up so follow your pattern but what you want to see is yellow yellow and that side and we don't want that one actually that we want this one so it's gonna be orange orange we put that over here so there's gonna be yellow yellow and orange orange and then we line up these units according to the color of these little flying geese that, so that's going to be yellow on that side, and then on the opposite side, it's going to be orange there, and opposite. Comes together so, so well, doesn't it? So this is where we have to be really careful with our sewing because you can see those are offset by a quarter inch, and that's when um, we sew an accurate quarter inch, then we're going to have that continuous line right there. Okay. So I'm gonna flip this over this way. It um, has you do it in rows, which is 
perfectly fine. I'm just going to chain piece it all together. And I like to flip it over this way so I can see my point right there. And you can you can line it up with your just your fingers and pin it or not pin it. I'm choosing not to pin, but I'm just going to be very mindful of this intersection right there. So again, you're welcome to throw a couple pins in there. It's nice to have a design board to just bring over by your machine. And then I'm going to be very mindful of this intersection right here. Okay, we're going to take it back right here. I'm not going to press at this stage and I'm going to open it up. Let's take a look how, uh, how everything is coming together. Let's open it up. And this is exactly what we want to see. Do you see this little intersection right here? It looks like it's continuous. I'm going to lift this up right here. That's that continuous line. So that come, that has come together so well. Okay, now we're going to flip this over here lists over here, this over here, and this over here. And I'm going to flip it this way because I want to sew down this side and I want to be able to see my point right there. Now I, I am going to choose, since so it becomes a little fiddly because I don't cut my threads in between, I'm going to put in a, a little, one of my little bird pins right here. We're just going to line that up. Makes it easier to take to the machine without everything shifting. Okay, let's take to the machine and sew. Okay, let's open it up, take a look, and again, that's exactly what we want to see, that continuous line there and there. So let's take it to our pressing station now, and there are some tips to pressing this. Again, I'm choosing not to clip my threads, whatever works for you. I like to keep it all together, and I'm going to press... Um, the center section towards the towards that big red square. So I'm going to press my seams there. And then right here, I'm pressing my seams out. So they're going to nest really well when it comes together, um, when this all comes together. And we only have two more seams. So let me flip it this way. Take a look at this. I just love how this block comes together with such ease. We're going to nest those seams with our little RBD bird pins, right? We love our little bird pins. I'm going to do this last seam. I'm going to pin it while I'm here too. And then we can just finish up one right after the other, right? We can just finish our seams up together. Okay, let's go sew. Okay, let's take it to our pressing station, open it up. Oh, it's coming together so beautifully. It's going to press on the outside. Now, the pattern does tell you uh, you can open up these seams right here. I'm choosing not to, but there, you're, there definitely is some bulk in this area. So if those last two seams, if you'd like to open them up, just go ahead and open them up. 
I'm going to press to one side. And then let's bring this back. I love how this block is, has turned out, all those points coming together. Like always, the last thing we need to do is trim it up, make sure there's nothing outside that we need to trim. And again, there are just lots of little threads. And we are finished with block number 12. Congratulations. This was a fun block to put together if you're following along and sewing along with me. Join me next time for block number 13. It's called Garden Patch and it's designed by Minky Kim.